right, so this clipper, the clippers has two speeds. If I'm using a, uh, a horse that has a little less experience, might be a little anxious about clippers, I might turn the speed down low just to keep it from having that higher intensity. He's like, what are you doing? <laughs> But I'm going to turn up high. And um, <clears throat> typically when you're clipping the face, you can approach them and, and go to, um, I like to go to nose first. Okay, turn them down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and approach them. Oh, yeah. Let them see it. Let them hear it. The first thing you want to do, so you're, He's had been clipped plenty of times, so he knows how this feels. But it tickles whenever the clipper blades actually touch. So I do want to make sure that I'm going to be in front of this rope. So that this horse panics, um, I'm behind it and I'm going to get in trouble. Okay, so I'm going to be in front of this rope. Make sure that my hands are in a safe location. If I'm holding my horse, I can hold it by the actual halter. Uh, do not hold it by the, the leaf. Just hold the halter to set their face so they're not running into you. And whenever you approach them and touch their whiskers, I don't like to go all the way to the face whenever I'm working with a young green horse because when you do, it's going to have the vibrations touching their skin and that's just a little bit too much for them to take. So what I'll do is I'll come to the actual whisker and just kind of touch it. He's like, oh, what are you doing? I have no problem with this. All right. And then I'm going to start to clean this muzzle. He's like, I'll help you. <laughs> okay. And go along with the hairline. You want to make sure this actually lays flat. Let me see. Okay, because we don't want to stab them. This is still sharp. Let me see. Stop playing. And I'm going to just go around. And we're just lying flat on the face. You notice how it's creating a nice flat angle. I'm going to continue to go around and flip the face. Now I come around to here, I like to swap hands. And again, you notice how this is flat. You don't want to dig in because then you're going to gouge your hair and you're also going to possibly cut your horse's foot. Um, with these that are growing into hair up here, you can turn the blade around and work downward. I'm going to do this on this side. To keep from, uh, to blend those hairs together and to keep from cutting the hair, uh, the shorter hairs, because then it's going to gouge and look absolutely hideous. This one over there, this one here, because he's got his little coming on. And yes, I do. Two points is one to this, but not to the extent that some people do. So he's going to have a little hair. Okay. <clears throat> Alright, so that's the muzzle. I do, and a lot of other people also, like to cut the inner hair of the nose. Um, if you do, that's great. If you don't, that's fine too. It's all prerogative and how people want to do. They're clipping.
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. And again, this is something that really bothers young horses the first time you do it. You have to be kind of patient. But I'll just take the nose and I'll just roll the nostril. And clip this inner portion. Um, this is something that I like to do it, uh, especially with your Western pleasure horses and horses that do halting and things of that nature. It's a whole lot more important to be more accurate and precise on your clipping because that is all reflection of your hair, and that does get. Uh, I'm trying to think of a good word, but penalized, or they do consider those attributes when they are actually, if you will, grading your horse on how well it's clean and groomed and things of that nature. Clipping is going to go into that. So we're just going to come in here and remove these hairs. You see the tickles. You notice how it's still remaining flat. So I'm going to move the nostril to make it easier for the actual blade itself to reach. Okay. okay. And then I'm just going to gently come in here and clip that out. Alright, now I've finished my nose. Thank you. I'm ready for you to be done. <laughs> and now I'm going to go to the eye. So whenever you're clipping the, um, the eyelashes, but there's a hair around the eye that's very long. When you are doing that, again, you want to make sure that you are flat and safe. I just clip the top. Now I'm going to go to the bottom. Now when I do this, I do not want to get my eyelashes in. So I will take his eye. And I will just lift his eyelashes, because I don't want to do that. I don't want to get his eyelashes, okay? And then I will clip the bottom lashes. I shouldn't say lashes, but the bottom whiskers. So that um, finishes that portion of your face. <clears throat> Next, I like to go to the bridal path. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rinse these blades right quick. Sometimes, um, and it's recommended, you also want to switch blade sizes. Typically, we're going to clip with a 30 to a 40 um, on, on muzzle. And then we are going to clip with a 30 or a 40 on ears. Um, and that is the size of the blade. You can notice here, this is a 30. telling me how fine this is and bridal paths can typically be cut with a tin. So those are a little different. Now I'm short and this horse is very gentle so I am going to get the block and step up so I can reach easier and then I'm going to show you the rule of thumb for bridal paths. Everybody has a different rule of thumb for this. Um, cutters, which up, rainers, things of that nature may have a different opinion of where to stop your bridal path than someone that shows uh, Western pleasure or that sort of thing. Um, barrel racers, our main concern is that our uh, head stall is going to have a nice, comfortable fit. So we may want to clip them. Some people don't clip them at all. 
um, and just keep this nice and well groomed. So I'm going to clip this, my rule of thumb, that I was taught is I take the ear and go back. The tip of the ear is where my bridle path ends. All right, um, some horses with really long ears, I don't clip them quite as long. So that's my rule of thumb is the tip of the ear. Good boy. Oh, get it stretch. It's wherever I'm gonna stop. And his is just before the tip of the ear. So I'm gonna turn it back on. I never wanna turn it on um, at the location I'm wanting to clip. So I'm going to turn it on and then approach him with it. And I'm going to pick this up. And I'm going to start in the middle of it. And I'm going to just slowly cut the first section of what I have. I did not cut all of this down at once you know. What I did is I cut the length off and now I can cut it to the base of the actual name. So that I have a nice clean cut here. It looks smooth. You want to make sure that it looks nice and smooth on the side. Of the if you don't have any excess hair sitting around your clip. Um, whenever he, his mane's been pulled out, but if you had a Western pleasure horse or a horse that was in halter, a lot of times, sometimes they'll want to kind of be this underneath just a little bit so that the banded mane will lay better. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So keep that a little bit. So whenever I band this, it's going to lay better. And that's how that looks to fall. I'm not going to clip ears today. This would be the next thing that I would typically do on a face. But I will go ahead and do under the jaw. So the jawline is also an important aspect to do, especially if you are grooming a show horse for competition. So I want this jawline to be smooth and clean and to appear polished. So I will go up in here and I'm going to clean the excess hair off. So again, I'm going to start with getting these long hairs. And I want to make sure quick. Yes. I want to make sure that this is going to be smooth. So I'm going to come in here carefully. And clean this up. Because you don't want it to look like you've cut it. In a sense. You just want it to look like this horse is perfectly groomed. And he does not have a hair out of place. So you don't want it to appear that the hair has been cut. 
rather that this horse has a smooth, fat, clean, non-long hair face. Okay, so that's what we're looking for here is a nice smooth face on this horse. And we're coming to the other side and do the same thing. And I want to make sure the throat latch is not, is missing long hairs as well. So I'm going to find that. And I'm going to come in here and clean up this area. And if you notice, I'm not even touching the horse's face when I'm coming across here. We are now done, and he is now clipped.